Hey, I'm Sarah, and welcome to another Test Frame Tuesday. Um, this time, we're going to be talking about, again, the number one crossbar, but it will be the OGT frame, or the outgoing trunk test frame. This frame is kind of similar to a video we've done before. A few years ago, back in the panel office, we did a video on the trouble desk, or the OGT desk. And that function that we discussed in the OGT desk is carried over directly to this frame here. And then the number five crossbar also has an equivalent type of frame. So they use this a lot. In fact, what I found after learning all about this switch is that this, uh, these two um, frames here, plus the frame that's just to the right of me are pretty much exactly identical to the OGT desk in the panel. Many of the circuits are also identical, and many of the ones that aren't identical are so similar that they're functionally the same. So what we really wanna do is talk about why, I mean, what this frame does, like why does it exist, and we'll go through it and use it a little bit and show you kind of how it looks and how it sounds. Now, the OGT frame uh, exists because uh, that there are these, the lines that run between central offices are called trunks. Now the trunk is the word for the pair of wires that runs from office A to office B, somewhere else in town. In addition to the actual copper wires that constitute the trunk pair, the trunk at either end has a set of relays that control the call as it passes through that trunk. Um, and those relays are unhelpfully also called trunk circuits. So what you have is an outgoing trunk leaving your office. The outgoing trunk goes to the pair of wires that travels across town in a cable somewhere. And then that very same pair of wires lands on an incoming trunk somewhere and that provides the supervision and control for your call as it leaves your telephone switch and progresses on to another one so when i say trunk what i really mean is not just the wires itself but i also mean the circuits that are also attached to those wires that are directly uh, caring for the transit of the call that's going through them now, trunks are usually, in these kinds of offices, only one way. So there's a differentiation between outgoing trunks, that's trunks that are leaving me and going somewhere else, and incoming trunks, that's trunks that are coming into me from somewhere else. So this uh, frame, being the outgoing trunk test frame, or the OGT frame, only tests the outgoing trunks, and the incoming trunks are tested elsewhere. All of my outgoing trunks from this office to wherever appear in Jack's, woo, okay, appear in Jack's on this panel. So there's uh, two rows of Jack's and then a label strip, another two rows and a label strip. The bottom row of Jack's is actually the trunks and the top row is the make busy Jack. So if I want to take a trunk out of service for any reason, like I've done here, I could stick a busy plug on it and a note that says why it's taken out of service. When I want to actually do a test on the trunk, I could take one of my two test cords. We'll be using T1 for this video. They're not different, it's just you have two for convenience. And we will pick a trunk to test on. So let's test on the number five crossbar. I should be making this trunk busy before I test on it, but in this case I don't care because I'm the only one doing this right now. So. I have this test frame plugged into an outgoing trunk that leaves this switch and goes over to the number five crossbar. Now, the first thing I can do is throw a voltmeter on it. And the voltmeter circuit's actually pretty clever. It will tell me all sorts of things about the electrical health of that trunk. First thing, uh, the most easy thing is to see whether or not I'm getting the proper voltage of the proper polarity coming back from that trunk, and I am. And there's a whole circuit for the voltmeter. I put the diagram up here 
where you can do all sorts of things and then it shows you for each test, um, what are you testing for? What is a good result and what is a bad result? So with the voltmeter, with these various keys, I can basically, it's, it's almost like having a, a hand, you know, a regular multimeter in your hand and putting the probes in different places. And all the voltmeter keys do, that's these here, all they do is move the probes around on a voltmeter and then it, the result is displayed here. So it's, when you understand it like that, it's actually quite intuitive. And when you use these keys enough, you start flicking them without even paying attention because you're so used to the, the muscle memory of looking for a specific uh, result. Rev, yes, as I say that. Yeah. Uh, you're so used to the muscle memory of looking for a specific result um, that you can do it without thinking. That's a voltmeter. So the next thing you can do is actually place a call out on that trunk. Now, the number five wants to speak MF. So what I will do is I will send it uh, two because it's two, three, two. That's the office code and it wants that final two. Uh, nine, five, five, two is a test line. Now this kind of test line is a supervision test line. And what it's gonna do is ring twice, and then it's going to pick up the pretend telephone. There's no telephone, it's just a pile of relays. But it'll pick up the phone, and it will test the trunk's ability to register that a phone has been picked up, okay? Then it will do a couple more tests, and then basically hang up and pick up the phone five more times with varying levels of resistance and capacitance in the line to test that the trunk relays can actually respond to lines or to trunk lines of different lengths. Okay, so here we go, 29552. It's gonna be an MF call. Okay, here we go. It's ringing now. This is the supervision lamp, I'm watching this. Okay, picked up and hung up. Let's do it a couple more tests and then it's gonna pick up and hang up here. Okay. And now the test is successful. Um, I can verify that using this phone by throwing the phone on it and you almost certainly can't hear this. Maybe you can. That TikTok sound, if you can't hear it, is the audible indication that the test passed. So the way, sorry, the way to actually use this is really just plug into every jack and then run that test on every jack, which is very, very boring. I've talked to a lot of telephone people and I've gotten a lot of YouTube comments from telephone people that remember how boring trunk testing was, because usually you did it late at night um, when there wasn't much else going on, and you just had to go through every single trunk in your office, plug in, run the test, and if you noticed anything that didn't uh, behave, you filled out a ticket for it and sent that ticket off to be resolved. So that's the number five crossbar. Um, the nice thing about this frame is it can test all, all kinds of trunks. And when I'm testing trunks, I'm not always using the supervision test line. Sometimes I just want to make them go and vi visually walk over and watch to make sure they're doing the thing I expect them to do. So let's do something else. Let's go ahead and place a call through um, the panel office tandem. So this call is gonna go from this test frame. It's gonna bounce off the panel office it's gonna bounce through the panel office, then come back here into this machine and terminate in a trunk in this uh, number one crossbar. That's gonna be 524, office brush three, office group two, and it'll be two, I really need the two right now. Uh, and we'll call, let's call this phone right here. Now what I'm gonna do that is I have to make sure that my compensating resistance is set properly, which it is. This is going to be a direct mechanical call, which means uh, direct mechanical is another word for revertive pulse. And it's a very old term. It just means that 
the call list being handled mechanically by a machine all the way through. And the language used at the time was reverted pulse. So direct mechanical and reverted pulse were synonymous. So direct mechanical and let's hit it. Oh, I messed up. Yep, it's gonna freeze. So not only is it direct mechanical, but I have to tell the test frame that I'm making, I'm going through an office tandem. So I'm going through the panel office tandem to bounce off there. And I didn't tell it that. So let's try that again. Okay, now we're in the number one crossbar. Here comes the marker. And this will ring. Awesome. Well, another thing that this frame can do that you're not really supposed to do, but I mean it happened, is we can barge into calls that are already in progress. Um, if we know what trunk they're on, you can't always guarantee that the trunk you plug into is going to have a call on it, but in this case, we will, and if I try to use that trunk right now, it should tell me no. Yeah, so I tried to do a test on it, and the busy lamp lights, that's telling you that that trunk actually has a call on it, so I can't interfere with it, except I can. So let's actually cancel that test. And what I've done before I started this segment is I placed a phone call from on this trunk from two phones over there. And because I know there's a phone call on this trunk, um, I can kind of just butt in. Hey, hey, get off the phone. No one cares. Okay, bye. Which is what I just did. So I can, this key puts the telephone on the trunk. And this key tells it to jump on the trunk without checking first. Just throw me on the conductors and get out of my way. That's this key here pointing uh, upward. And then I could just jump on and talk any trunk I want. You really shouldn't actually do that in practice. That would make people upset, but you can. And the last thing I can do, which is mega handy, is the remote control belt line. So if I want to test a trunk and actually be over there, I don't want to have to call somebody and have them sit at this frame and, and press the start key for me, which is annoying. So what I can do, plug into the trunk I want, make sure this is pushed in. That activates the belt line. Now a belt line in the central office is um, a ring that runs around the entire switch on every frame, kind of like a belt. And I can go to a different frame and jack into that belt line Specifically, there's one for this frame. I can go over into the switch, jack into the belt line for this frame, and then I can control the test circuit while I'm standing there, which is mega handy. So I just do that, and throw the, remote, the RC key. RC is remote control. That tells the system that I want to use the remote. Set up my test. That. And then all I have to do is grab my remote and walk over somewhere else. One of the things that I think people gloss over in, in this frame is this is also a blue box because when you place an MF call, this is doing the exact same thing as a blue box. So uh, going back real quick to, you know, let's place an MF call right back to here, to this office. Um, and if we do an MF call by throwing this key, there's literally no difference between this and the blue box, except I can set up the numbers I want to dial right away here. I can throw the MF key. You can't 
hear the tones because I don't know if the speaker's on. But that it does the exact same thing. Hey, let me turn the speaker on real quick so you can hear it. That speaker uh, over there is just on these two trunks. So any calls that go over at one of these two, you'll hear it as long as the speaker's on. Um, here we go. Yeah, and that was this frame, or this frame MFing out over that trunk. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Um, we're gonna keep doing more of these. I really like these videos for this summer because to be honest, I'm super busy and I haven't had the time to put on, you know, like a real super high effort editing video. So this is a nice way to give you something um, that you can kind of have fun with without going through like a one month recording editing thing. So I will see you next time. And until then, take care.